Good morning, greetings friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds, get on a good nutritional supplement program. If you've heard about something, read about something, somebody told you about something about health or nutrition you want clarification on, if you or a loved one is dealing with an autoimmune health, autoimmune health challenge, skin health challenge, digestive health challenge, we're here for you on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side, please go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, and don't forget to check out the longevity business opportunity by clicking on the join the team link. If you're interested in starting a business or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself. Click on the join the team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. You can also call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. Okay, welcome back to the Bright Side, friends. We have been talking about uh, detox, glucuronidation, and the last program we left off talking about one of the best ways to upregulate your detoxification system, your glucuronidation system. One of the best ways to detoxify your intestine, detoxify your blood, is to drink kombucha tea, the tangy, tasty somewhat uh, unusual substance that is pretty much, you come right down to it, one of the most healthy things that you can get in the supermarket along with the eggs and the produce. Eggs, produce, and kombucha pretty much are the healthiest things that you can get in the supermarket. According to researchers writing in the July 2014 edition of the Compre uh, journal Comprehensive Reviews in Food Science and Food Safety, kombucha tea is a blood detoxifier. It can reduce the risk of heart disease. Reduce atherosclerosis. It's got antihypertensive benefits. It can support your immunity. It can reduce your risks of cancer. It can improve eyesight. It's got anti-aging benefits. And just as a general, general metabolism stimulating tonic. That's from the, uh, the scientist writing in the Journal of Comprehensive Reviews in Food Science and Food Safety. It's got chelating properties. It can help improve anxiety and mood. It can help your digestive system. It's fermented. And it's got um, microbes. It's got the, the good bacteria and it has good yeast. You know, there's good yeast as well as good bacteria. You have a microbiome, like we have a microbiome. The microbiome, biome means world or universe. The microbiome is the universe of bacteria that live in our bodies. And the myco, M-Y-C-O, microbiome is the universe of fungus, the universe of yeast that lives in our body. And that includes candida, FYI. For people who think they have, oh, I got chronic yeast, I got chronic yeast infections. Everybody has candida. It's just the candida overgrow. Just like uh, what happens with the bacteria when we don't take care of ourselves. The candida overgrow, the bacteria overgrow, the, I should say the bad bacteria, the bad yeast overgrow. Everything's in a balance in the body. So you get the good yeast, you get the good bacteria, you get chelating properties, you get uh, enzymes. In fact, Using kombucha tea with your meals is a great way to support digestive health. How do you like that? 
Using kombucha tea with your meals, well, a few, it does a few things. First of all, we'll talk about this later on, uh, there are appetite suppressants in kombucha tea. That's right. Kombucha tea, when you drink with your meals, you'll find yourself eating less food because of the natural appetite suppressants. That also makes kombucha tea something really uh, uh, helpful, potentially helpful to drink in the middle of uh, the day, especially if you're trying to lose weight. It's also uh, a way to activate your enzymes. It has enzymes in it, and it will also activate your own enzymes, and it will activate your ultimate enzymes. So if you're taking your ultimate enzymes, take some kombucha tea with your ultimate enzymes. Stuff's amazing stuff, right? And it tastes pretty darn good. And it's got nutrition in it, too. It's got B vitamins in it. It's got panto in it. It's got thiamine in it. It's got vitamin B12, which is typically only found in animal foods, so it's perfect for vegans and vegetarians. It's got some uh, vitamin C in there. Four ounces of uh, kombucha tea you can have twice the RDA, which is pretty pathetically low. That's true. But still, you get, a, you get a good jolt of vitamin C. Pretty much, you probably get as much vitamin C in four ounces of kombucha tea as you would in, uh, you get more, way more than an orange, probably like three or four oranges in four ounces of kombucha tea. It's, it's a pretty good source of the stuff, of vitamin C, that is. It's got minerals, good minerals, easy to absorb minerals, colloidal minerals, especially chromium, cobalt, manganese. And it's got the glucuronic acid. It helps your body glucuronidate. Glucuronic acid is oxidized, I should say gluconic acid or glucuronic acid. They're both pretty much the same. They're very similar. Uh, both of these are a function of glucose that's oxidized. Glucose, what happens is sugar gets fermented. This is how kombucha tea, why kombucha tea has all this glucuronic acid in it. It's basically fermented sugar. The way you make kombucha tea is by fermenting sugar. It's, it's fermenting sugar with tea. It's a fermented sugar tea product. And when you ferment the sugar, you create this glucuronic acid. You create uh, ethanol gas, uh, uh, carbon dioxide gas, and, uh, and glucuronic acid as a byproduct. The good microbes, these good bacteria that are in kombucha tea that are so important for your digestive tract, so important for helping lower your blood cholesterol and improve blood fat processing and helping you detoxify and all the wonderful things these probiotics do, they also provide mental health benefits. Yes, probiotics, good bacteria, are important for mental health. That's because when you have a combination of these fermented fats, these uh, uh, probiotics and, and, and fermented byproducts, you also get something very interesting, a very special type of fat as a byproduct. When microbes do their business, especially when there's fiber around, this very interesting fat is produced, a very special kind of fat that you don't hear a lot about. It's a watery fat. The action of the microbes, these, these good bacteria, when they're in your intestine, that you get presumably from uh, drinking your kombucha tea, the action of these microbes from your kombucha tea upon our foods produces a very interesting type of fat, a watery fat, a fat that's watery, a water-soluble fat. Under ordinary conditions, we're always talking about the main distinction, fat-soluble and water-soluble. We're always talking about how some things are fat-soluble, some things are water-soluble. Some uh, uh, chemicals, molecules are fat-soluble and some molecules are water-soluble, and that's an important distinction to make. The body handles water-soluble material differently than it handles fat-soluble material. But these kinds of fats that are produced by probiotics on fiber have a, a foot in both grounds, or, or ha, have a, 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 they're straddling a fence. They have a, a foot in the water-soluble side and a foot in the, in the fat-soluble side. They're water-soluble and they're fat soluble, and this gives them some very, very intriguing biochemical properties. They can provide you energy like a fat, but they're easily handled like water. They're very small fats, and they're so, actually, we say short fats. Fats are uh, described by their length. So they're very short fats. Think tinker toys. Fats are like a tinker toy and like all molecules. And you have short tinker toys and you have, you have different sized tinker toys. These, these kinds of fats that I'm talking about that are watery and fatty, they're short. They're short tinker toys. And because they're short, they cross membranes very readily. And that makes them easy for the body to use. All right, 844 is our number. Got lines open. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, 
right, we are back on the bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on the archive pages at BenFuchsArchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up and also BrightSideBen.com. We've got blog, blog, posts and, blog posts and news stories at BrightSideBen.com, PharmacistBen.com, and CriticalHealthNews.com, and all the longevity products, and the Join the Team Now link that you can click on if you want to start a longevity business. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, TruthTreatments.com, our biomimetic mineral mist made with plant-derived fulvic minerals, as well as our uh, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and Truth Retinol 1% Gel, and Truth Retinol 5% Gel, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. So kombucha tea is a great source of nutrition. It's a great source of detoxifying elements. It helps acidify the contents of the stomach. It's uh, got the probiotics, which help you produce these short-chain fats, which are super interesting. These short-chain fats cross membranes very easily, which means they get into the brain really easily. They get into cells really easily. It's this ease of penetration that accounts for the very wide ranging benefits of these short, short fats, short chain, technically they're called short chain fatty acids, short fats. Fats have, fats come in different lengths. They've got a dietary fats come in different lengths. You got short fats, long fats, and medium fats. The long ones are the ones we think of mostly when we think of fats. They're the ones found in uh, oils for the most part. Or uh, when we think about, when we talk about fats, most of us are really thinking about these long chain triglycerides or long fats. And they're very important. They're super important. They're great sources of energy, and uh, they uh, are go to make cell membranes and form structural components of the body. But they require work. They require a healthy functioning biochemistry. The body has to expend energy, and a, a lot of systems have to be working correctly for these uh, fats to uh, get processed as they should. These fats are also somewhat unstable. This is what accounts for the... Uh, the problematic reputation that some fats have. I get a letter, probably, I probably get two or three letters every week or Facebook messages or some, some people, somehow people communicating to me, asking me about my position on fats. And, uh, I, I, I'm on record as saying fats are pretty darn important and it, it may not be something that you want to totally avoid. Although there's, I can see the, the reason why people say to avoid them, why nutritionists will tell you to avoid them, they're very unstable. And in nutrition, unstable molecules can be problematic. But at the same time, these uh, long chain fats and fats in general have some really interesting properties, really interesting health properties that I've witnessed myself with my own eyes, with my patients in my own life. So I, long chain fats, yes, they can be problematic. These are the fats that are found in oils. And this is why people say don't drink oils or don't use oils. It's because of these long chain fats, but on the other hand, these long chain fats have some very interesting health properties. In fact, there are two of these long chain fats that are actually like vitamins in the sense that you have to have them. In the world of nutrition, when you have to have something, we say that's essential, and there's two long chain fats that are essential. There's two long chain fats that are incredibly important. I mean, incredibly important for so many different things. They go to make cells, and they're an important part of the hormone system, and they have inflammatory inflammatory and anti-inflammatory properties, these two essential long chain fats, essential meaning you have to have them in the diet. We call them essential fatty acids, EFAs. EFAs are long chain fats that are found in oils that have a tremendous health benefits that you can't live without and you can't make. That makes them essential. Without them, uh, deficiencies in these uh, two essential fatty acids can wreak health havoc in the body. Pretty much all inflammatory issues are going to have some element of either a deficiency or, or a disruption somehow in uh, how the body utilizes or how the body processes or how the body works with these two long chain fats. Dry skin, PMS, female health issues, endometriosis, brain problems, neural problems, depression, anxiety, sore muscles, sore joints can all be the result of deficiencies in these two long fats that are found in oils that are said to be essential, that are called essential fatty acids. And both of them are required. There's two of them. We know them as omega-3 and omega-6, which is really kind of, it's not very accurate to say because there's, just because something's omega-3 or omega-6 doesn't make it an essential fatty acid. Nonetheless, the two long fats 
that act like, uh, that are so important, they're like vitamins, have an omega-6 like structure and an omega-3 like structure. Omega-6 and omega-3 refers to how the, the, the chemical structure, the chemical makeup of the molecule. So long fats are important. Then there's the medium fats or medium length, medium chain. They're more watery than the long fats. The long fats don't have water solubility. The medium fats have some water solubility. In fact, they're, they're just about as water soluble as they are fats. So I shouldn't say it. they're more fat soluble than they are water soluble, but there's starting to get a little watery. And the fact that they're fatty, but they're watery makes them very interesting. They're a great source of energy like the long fats. That's what the long fats main role is, is their source of energy. Well, you still get the, when, when you have a medium fat, you still have a source of energy, but because they're water soluble, they're easier for the body to process. That means you get energy without the work with the medium fats. Check that out. You get energy without the work. Yeah, a little bit of work, but nowhere near as much work as the body has to, uh, labor as the body has to expend to uh, get the energy out of the long fats. With the medium chain fats, because they're water soluble, they go right to work. At the digestive level, they don't have to be processed like the long fats, so it's easier for the body to extract their energy. They go right into the lymphatic system, right into the circulation. Ordinarily, fats don't go right into the circulation. They gotta get processed, they gotta go through the liver. These kinds of fats, because they're water soluble, go right to work. And that makes them ideal for athletes, for anybody who needs energy quickly, for weight loss, they're perfect for weight loss because it allows you to get energy from fat. Same way you get energy from a, a crappy fat, you get energy from these medium fats, but your body doesn't have to process it. So it goes right to work and it works quickly. You get energy really quickly. And if you have any, any digestive health issue, gallbladder issue, intestinal issue, they're perfect for that. In fact, when I used to work at, uh, I worked at the, uh, the uh, Peds, pediatric ICU and a neonatal ICU at University Hospital many years ago, and, and we used to have a lot of patients, a lot of kids who would come in from around the region for uh, digestive health issues or have their gallbladders taken out. These are little kids, babies. They're, they take the gallbladders out of little kids all the time. And uh, anyway, these kids had fat processing problems, and standard medicine on the medi medicine cart was a little tub of medium-chain triglycerides, MCTs, MCT oils. So if you had a gallbladder taken out, you have any liver problems, intestinal problems, you might want to consider using MCTs, short-chain fats. Best source of short-chain fats is coconut oil. In fact, this is one of the major reasons why coconut oil is such a valuable food. It's, it's uh, depending on who you ask, it's anywhere from 10 or 11 or 20% to 60% MCTs. It's nature's best source of MCTs, of medium-chain triglycerides. You can actually, uh, you can just get straight MCTs, straight medium-chain triglycerides, in, uh, which is basically just coconut oil. They sell it as MCTs. And uh, you can buy that at a health food store or on the internet, just straight MCT oil. And if you're trying to lose weight, I highly recommend the stuff. I use it in skincare. It's got some really interesting skincare properties because of this, uh, this sort of half water soluble, half fat soluble um, molecular makeup that makes it very, very interesting for uh, transdermal penetration when it comes to active materials. All right. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. on the bright side and we got lots of lines open 844-236-6010 if you got left on hold in the past now's the time to get on board because we got uh, no calls so 844-236-6010 is our number i am pharmacist ben thanks for listening to the bright side we are on the air monday through friday 8 to 9 pacific and 10 to 11 central time answering your questions and helping spread the good news about nutrition and nutritional supplementation if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the bright side, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to check out our truth treatment products, they're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we will get your calls if we have them as soon as I get done with a couple of stories here. This is from, uh, this is from the University of Buffalo, Buffalo, New York. Low vitamin D levels impair stamina and performance over time. 
Now, if you understand anything about vitamin D, that makes perfect sense because vitamin D is our feel-good vitamin. Vitamin D and vitamin A together are feel-good vitamins. They are summertime vitamins. Vitamin D is associated with the summertime because it's a sunshine vitamin. Everybody knows it's the sunshine vitamin. What happens is the sun hits cholesterol in the skin, and that cholesterol gets converted into vitamin D. In that way, by the way, vitamin D is a type of cholesterol. So just like vitamin D levels uh, are important for stamina and performance, so is cholesterol. Yes, cholesterol, like vitamin D, is a feel-good substance. It's a repair and growth and fertility molecule. It's a movement molecule and a thinking molecule. All these steroid-like substances help the body deal with life. That's what the steroid hormones really are. And all the steroid hormones are versions of cholesterol. Even vitamin D is very similar to steroid hormones. Some people will tell you it's a hormone. It has hormonal properties. It acts like a hormone at the level of the cell. Like other steroids, it's a steroid hormone, which means it's important for youth, vitality, stamina, performance. Vitamin D is best obtained from the sun, but you can also get vitamin D in supplemental form. Actually, I should say food form. Food form is the best way to get vitamin D that's not the sun. The sun's the best way to get it. But uh, uh, food is really uh, uh, your next best, not supplements. Supplements are probably the poorest way to get your vitamin D. Nonetheless, so you, you got to do what you got to do. If you're not eating a lot of fish or you can't get a lot of vitamin D containing foods, fish and mushrooms are probably your two best and organ meats are your most important vitamin D containing foods. Uh, vitamin D and eggs too, actually. Vitamin D is found in foods that we're told not to eat a lot of, put it that way. So much for the medical models, wisdom on dietary nutri- uh, on dietary strategies. Uh, liver and organ meats and dairy and eggs, anything that has a lot of cholesterol in it is going to have a lot of vitamin D. So anyway, vitamin D is a uh, a growth substance like cholesterol is a growth substance like all the steroid hormones are growth substances. The best way to get your vitamin D is to get yourself some sun. You can always get a sun lamp too, by the way, if you live in uh, Seattle or someplace where there's not a lot of sunshine, upstate New York, for example. Uh, you can always get a sun lamp and, and sun, lay down under the, under the sun lamp with as much of your body exposed, um, you know, once a day or well, once a week, twice a week kind of thing. All right. Let's see here. Oh, this was an interesting story. I don't know if you guys heard about this. Apparently, scientists are now discovering that uh, the longer you live, the less likely you are to die. Hmm. That's kind of interesting. Now, I got to give a little caveat here. Once you reach the age of 105, the longer you live, the less likely it is to die. A new study suggests, this is uh, from the journal Business Insider, a new study suggests once people reach 105 years old, their chances of dying every day are about 50-50. That means that the risk of dying increases as we age, but it plateaus when we reach 105. So maybe uh, Doc is right when he says that we can live to be 200 years old. Isn't that kind of strange? As we get older, the odds of dying increase, obviously, up to a certain point. Beginning right around age 80, the chances of dying on any given day decelerate. And by age 105, our chances of dying are go down to about 50-50. That's like the equivalent of tossing a coin. It could go either way on any day. So according to this study anyway, basically, we could live forever because every day it's just kind of a 50-50 crapshoot whether you're going to whether you're going to make it. Now, a lot of that is statistical mumbo jumbo. That's true. But the point is, is that you can make it a long time. The oldest person ever recorded was a French woman. This is recorded. There are probably people who lived longer that we didn't record, but the longest, the oldest person who is recorded in the annals, uh, who died uh, at the uh, oldest age was the uh, French lady who lived to be 122, actually almost well, about 122. And uh, that was about 20 years ago, 122. That's, that's a lot. Now, here's the thing. If one person can do it, if the human body is capable of living to 122 years, if one person can do it, anybody can do it. By the way, this lady smoked, as I recall. So uh, if you're 60, 70, 80, and you're thinking, well, it doesn't matter what I do. Yeah, you got another 40 years. You got another 30, 40 years. Take care of yourself. Get on a supplement program. Eat less food. Do some yoga, exercise, meditate, relax. Most people who are older know how to relax. You don't make it to be 80 if you're not relaxed. But, you know, take care of yourself. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Let's go to Austin, Texas and say good morning to Jessica. What's up, Jessica? How you doing? 
Hey, you're doing great. Um, I'm wondering about kombucha sugars and people with diabetes or people who don't want to have much sugar. How does how well, does that it's, relate? It's a it's fermented sugar, so the glucose turns into uh, the glucose. It, it, tur- it, it turns into glucuronic acid or gluconic acid, which is not like sugar. It's not handled by the body as sugar. So uh, you can probably get away with uh, doing kombucha tea, but nonetheless, gluconic acid in these byproducts of, of glucose, sometimes they can throw, throw off your, your blood sugar. See how you feel. That's what I would do. It's certainly not drinking a Coke, but you might, have, you might have an issue with it. You have to see how you feel. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But uh, do you take, are you a diabetic or are you just asking? Uh, just asking, I'm curious because okay. I. Okay, I, uh... it, it's a good question because you know, there is glucose and glucose byproducts in there that can throw off blood sugar. But you got to kind of see, you know, for if I was a diabetic, I would just see how I felt after I drank it. You can tell if you're having a sugar problem if you're tired after you do sugar, right? If you if you drink your kombucha tea and you're fatigued or you're tired, chances are you're throwing off your sugar. If you drink your kombucha tea and you don't feel a crash, uh, or you don't you don't feel like you need a nap an hour later. You know, uh, you know that feeling I'm talking about after you have bread or after you have pasta or sweets or something, something that spikes your bl- your uh, blood sugar and then your insulin. Go for it. Otherwise, don't. If you can't you can't? That that would be my take on it. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, so on that on that line, uh, is have you is, have, you, uh, drink, have in- you drank? Do you drink kombucha tea? I'm sorry to interrupt. Do you drink kombucha oh, tea? Oh no, I love it, especially the ginger. Kombucha. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The ginger's awesome. You can add your own. Do you buy pre-gingered or, or do you make your own or? Uh, no, I don't make my own. Uh, okay. But I get organic and it seems to taste better than uh, non-organic. Um, you know, it's, it wasn't that long ago you couldn't get it in the supermarket. So take advantage. If you don't feel like making it, just, just buy the good stuff. Buy the stuff. Uh, yeah, the organic stuff and you can get it anywhere pretty much these days. Anything so else? I was wondering... Yeah, yeah, one little thing. Uh, I was wondering, uh, I got an insulin test uh, of 5.8, and so I'm wondering if that's too high. That's, uh, it's getting high. Do you have any other symptoms? Don't go, I always go by test, but it's, you know, it's not really, really high, but it's high. Um, do you, okay. uh, do you, uh, are you feeling any symptoms? Do blood pressure symptoms or weight gain, anything uh-huh. like that? Hang on, we gotta take a break, Jessica. Hang on just a sec, okay? We gotta take a break, and then we'll finish up when we come back. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Bright Side. Hunters. All right, we're back on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got lines open 844 236 6010 is our number. We're talking to Jessica in Austin. Jessica, you there? Yes. Hey, so I just did, uh, while we we're in the break, I did a quick little search in my handy dandy blood guide, uh, guide to blood tests here. And uh, you, said, you said you're in the fives, your insulin? Where were you? Uh, 5.8. Yeah, that's not so bad. Usually, I think the average, according to this book anyways, in the eights. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, as long as you're asymptomatic, that's really the way you want to go. It's not by your test scores. You want to go by how symptomatic you are. And for insulin, uh, a weight gain and blood pressure are the two best ways you can assess uh, whether you're starting to become insulin resistant and your insulin levels are going up. Was that your question? Uh, yeah, yeah, that is. Okie dokie. We'll have a great day. Thanks for your call. Appreciate it. You too. Thank you. Okay, take care. All right. Day four four two three six sixty ten. Dave in the thumb. How's it going, man? Good morning. Hey, good morning, Ben. How you been? I'm doing good. How's the family? Doing great. Doing All right, good. Just enjoying the summer here. All right. What's going on? How can we help you? Well, yesterday you had a gentleman call in about tetanus. Okay. And I thought I'd like to chime in on that subject okay um you know tetanus comes from you know farms manure and yeah and, you know rusty nails or whatever right. you know so right people that live out in the city even people in the country if they don't have livestock you know and they're not milling around in their poop you know the chances of rusty nails <laughs> yeah you know they don't need no tetanus shot okay so, i can understand that that's yeah, why I say keeping the wound clean. Yeah. Keeping the wound clean is the be- is your best strategy. Absolutely, and silver is magic. Colloidal silver, ionic silver is incredible okay. for that. All right. How about iodine too? Probably. Iodine, yep. Iodine is good. Um, I, you know, and that that's funny. Uh, do you remember mercurochrome? Of course. Yeah. When we were kids, the orange stuff. That's yeah. mercury. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's colloidal mercury, though. Yeah. Well. Is colloidal mercury better than 
regular mercury. <laughs> oh yeah, when you when you make something coll- yeah, of course, when you make something colloidal, it changes its characteristics. Colloidal iodine. Okay. You know, colloidal iodine is in foods. You eat colloidal right. iodine, but uh, it'll kill back. T- it'll kill you if you drank it and it wasn't in the colloidal form. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. So no, when you co- yeah. make make something into a colloid, it changes it changes things. I'll be darned. I I never thought about that. I guess you know, colloidal silver, colloidal minerals. Same idea. Yeah. S- same it's idea. Suspended. It's the the mineral suspended in. I, I don't know that mercurochrome is colloidal though necessarily. I don't know trying, that it is either. I I don't think it is. I think it's a I think it's an ion. I I don't I don't know much about mercurochrome actually. I haven't seen. Have you seen it in a while? No, but I just uh, somebody mentioned it not too long ago, and I was like, oh my god! I had yeah. no. I mean, I didn't know. What, what did we know when we were kids, right? But mom always whipped it out when put a little mercury on cut. there. <laughs> right. Yeah, I hadn't thought about mercurochrome for weeks. <laughs> right, I hadn't really thought about mercurochrome for a while. I, I think it's. I, you know, I got to look into that because I don't. Really, you know, that's funny. I don't really know much about mercurochrome. Yeah, whoever, it, whoever I heard on some internet radio show, they said it's mercury. It's definitely so, mercury, but I don't, I th- yeah. I'm not sure if it's. I'm trying to think if it's a colloidal mercury or not. I don't. I can't say. I have to look that up. All right, what well, else you got I mean, for me, I'm Dave? 50, I just turned fifty nine, so. All that mercurial mom put on me growing up as a kid. You did all right. Wounds, I guess it didn't affect me too much. You did all right. You did all, all right, right, Dave. All right, man. All right. Good talk to you, Ben. Thanks Love for your call. Uh, I listen every day. And, I appreciate uh, you it. Are, Thank you. You are a superstar, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, Dave. Bye-bye. All right. Let's go to Ron in Wyoming. Good morning, Ron. Welcome to the Bright Side. Well, good morning, Ben. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. What's going on in Wyoming? Where are you in Wyoming, by the way? Uh, Northern Wyoming, Sheridan. Oh, yeah, it's beautiful this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, it's green up here. We've had a lot of moisture. I'm ready for more sunshine. So, anyway. Good deal. But, Good uh, deal. What's going on? It's interesting, it's interesting hearing about the mercurial. I haven't heard about that in a long time. But Yeah, well, I hadn't anyway. either. I didn't even thought about it. <laughs> I know. It's funny. Anyways, I called you, oh, about a year ago about the uh, cholesterol deal, but that's not why I called you today because um, you told me to get off of my statin, so I did. Um, I haven't been taking statin drugs for over a year now. But uh, anyways, the reason I called today is you're always saying how you should never have dry skin, and I really haven't had dry skin up until this year. And we, my wife and I started going to the gym back in January, and we have been, you know, started up. You know, I'm 58 years old, and, and I've always been athletic and stuff all my life, but uh, we kind of, you know, hit and miss, you know, but we've been consistently going, and I thought maybe my dry skin had something to do with going to the gym all the time, and, you know, my elbows are super dry and whatnot, and I, I did order your um, longevity, you know, a few weeks ago, okay. and uh, I haven't started it yet, it hasn't, I haven't received it yet, and um, so that's a different story in itself, but. Anyway, I was wondering, what, what can I do? I'm going to try that to start with. Uh, what other things can I do for, for lowering cholesterol? Skin? Oh, for dry skin. What's that? Uh, well, essential fatty acids are the most important, number one. Fat metabolism. Make sure you're processing fats. Take digestive enzymes with all your meals. Bile salts with all your meals. Uh, use bile probiotics. Salt? Bile, B-I-L-E, bile salts. You'll find those in the ultimate enzymes, but you can take extra ones. Use apple cider vinegar with all your meals or, or something called... Uh, Pepsin, P-E-P-S-I-N, H-C-L, or betaine H-C-L, which, again, you'll find in your uh, ultimate enzymes. The mineral zinc can be very important. Also, building connective tissue can be very important for helping with dry skin. A lot of times, uh, well, connective tissue, uh, skin is, uh, or water is trapped in the skin via the action of connective tissue. So building connective tissue using glucosamine, glucogel caps, gelatin, those kinds of things, anything you do to build connective tissue. And then... uh, if you want uh, uh, some extra nutrients, vitamin A is your main secretory. That means secretions. It improves secretions. It's the, your main secretory vitamin. So make sure you're getting enough vitamin A. And take your vitamin A and your essential fatty acids with, um, take, uh, with your meals. Vitamin A and essential fatty acids with your meals and your ultimate enzymes and your apple cider vinegar or, or acidifying agent. Taking them all together. And then topically, use retinoic acid. Use alpha hydroxy acids topically, exfoliate, stimulate as you're uh, shedding uh, cells off the surface. You're increasing the growth of fats or the movement of fats from the um, special fat secreting structures in a cell. So using exfoliating techniques is another thing that you can do. Does that help? I'm writing stuff down. 
<laughs> oh, get to, I know. I went fast. Get on the uh, get on the archives. Get on the archives okay. and just listen in again. I know I went fast. I gave you a lot of stuff, but but it but there is oh, a lot I, of stuff. I enjoy your program. I listen to you when I can. I'm I'm always working when I'm listening to you. But um, anyway, so okay. Well, I'll try that now. Um, and then this uh, longevity stuff. It's got like the sixty minerals and all the different other things. Is that got everything you need? Mighty nine essential nutrients. A- absolutely, it's always the core of everything. Okay. All right. Well, oh, I'll give all. all right. the, I'll give it a try, and and hopefully things will change. Because yeah, I can't. It's driving me nuts. This dry skin. So anyway. All right, but, all right, buddy. Good yep, to talk yep. to you. Take care, Ron. Thank all you. Right. Yep. All right. Let's move on to Dorian. You get the last word today, Dorian. What's up, buddy? Hi. Hi, Ben. I was just calling to find out if I could take um, baking soda for my pancreas problems, since my pancreas has the problem. I have absolutely type one. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. You want uh, baking soda can be very helpful if you have uh, pancreatic issues or pancreatitis or uh, you want to prevent it from happening or diabetes even. Um, make sure you don't take your baking soda with your meals, though. That's the most important okay. thing about using baking soda. It'll neutralize stomach acid. So you want to wait until a, a couple hours after you've eaten. Uh, get uh, oh. get uh, any Dr. Mark Circus, S-I-R-C-U-S. I, I, was mention, I was talking about him the other day. I forgot what we were talking about. But Dr. Mark Circus um, has a book called Sodium Bicarbonate. And you can get it on the Internet. And he has a lot of stuff he's written about. Um, sodium bicarbonate, and you might want to start reading up on that. But sodium bicarbonate is one of the uh, great underappreciated supplements or dietary strategies, I should say, it's not really a supplement, that you can use to improve digestive health, and especially if you're dealing with the absolute misery of pancreatitis. I remember we were talking, somebody called about pancreatitis a couple days ago. Pancreatitis is just a horrible, horrible health thing, health challenge. You don't, you don't have pancreatitis, I take it. No, do I you? don't. Yeah, you don't, don't. You never want to. You never want to get that. That is just an awful, miserable, uh, miserable health challenge. We don't think about the pancreas until something goes wrong, uh, and there's a reason why pancreatic cancer is the most deadly of all cancers, because of the vital nature of the pancreas and all the all the chemistry that's going on there. It's a veritable enzyme factory. It's your main enzyme factory in your body. Mm-hmm. All right, does that help you, Dorian? Okay. Yes, it does. Thank you so okay, much. Okay, buddy. Thanks for your call. Appreciate mm-hmm. it. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening to The Bright Side. Check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all our truth skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Bye.